Hi, I'm Garrett with IDC Woodcraft. This video is going to teach you how to make your CNC life a lot more efficient. Whether you're in machining, CNC routing, CNC laser. If you plan on getting into production or you just want to minimize your tool setup times, your position setup times, I'm going to teach you six cheat codes that are going to help you streamline this entire process. Basic CNCers don't know this. Intermediates, most of them don't know it. And a lot of the seasoned CNCers don't use these techniques. These G codes are going to help you set your machine up really quickly and be able to do it repetitively in a minimal amount of time. So I'm going to teach you about work offset G codes G54 to G59. The way this video is going to go is first I'm going to set up a couple scenarios so that you get the gist of what I'm talking about. Then I'm going to show you how these different codes work and then actually demonstrate them working in different ways. And finally, I'm going to teach you how to set them up so that once they're set up, your zero points are set for multiple different jobs in different locations on your machine. This video literally took me all day to make. I didn't plan on it, but that's why it's going to be lengthy. I want to make sure that you understand exactly what this is, the benefit of these codes are, and how you can apply them in whatever you're doing in CNC to make your job a lot easier and you can get to cutting a lot more stuff. So to help you understand where this is going, I have to set up some scenarios. Let's suppose that you engrave glass on your machine occasionally and you always set up your glass in a certain position and you use a very long tool like this diamond engraver and then you cut wood like this you maybe have a production thing that you're doing like me I'm actually designing a dust boot that uh, will fit on these Bob's CNC machines and I hope to market these through Etsy and what have you but this is going to require a two-step process the first step is to cut it out of the block of wood and I need a reference point here and then I have the second step which is here I've got to turn a piece over and do some other work here and I need a reference point here then I've got a third scenario uh, I've got this cute little Christmas ornament I've made and it says don't follow me you won't make it I've got some detail here and this is all engraved into that but not on the other side I want this to be uh, engraved on both sides so in order to do that I want to set up two stations so I can do one side flip it over do it over here and while it's doing it over here I can put a fresh one in here and when this one is done I can take it out and it's already started another one I can flip these over and I, I can set up all kinds of stations using these G codes so these are the different kinds of scenarios that are here so let's just start off with the glass and I always know that my glass is going to be set at this back corner at a certain point of this machine and I'm always using a tool of the same height so instead of having to cut wood and then decide I'm going to cut some glass and have to go in to set the tool height and to reset the zero I can have that all preset in the machine so all I need to do is swap the tool put the glass plate in and start to run the program and that's where the first work offset comes in so I will use a G59 in fact I do use G59 to set this whole thing up so when I run the program, I tell the machine it's in G59, it automatically knows that that's the zero position. Then I start running my dust boots. And I don't want to have to lose that position because I'm going to go back to that and make some more glass stuff. So I have a new position called G54. And G54 is always referenced off of this corner. So I can make this part, I can always know where this board goes. And then when I got this set up, obviously I can't reference to a corner. So I need to reference to a circle. Maybe I just have a plug here that this will fit on and sit down on. So I just need to know where that circle is at. So I can tell the machine with G55, the zero point is going to be right here uh, at the top of the material. Likewise, when we get to this guy, my G56 can be the center of this one at the top. 
the center of this one at the top. Now here's the benefit here, right? I'm gonna engrave the exact same stuff on both sides. So when I call up a G56, it knows it's gonna start engraving it over here with the same program. I'm gonna call up G57 and it's gonna come over and do the same detail on the other side. I'm hoping I've kind of placed a scenario. If you are planning on building stuff in, on a CNC or cutting stuff on your CNC machine and you're going to do it repetitively and you're going to be doing change outs from different types of things, you want to be able to have that all set up as much as possible so you don't have to reset things. So let's dive into this controller so you see how all this works. So we are currently looking at the control panel for this CNC router that I'm using, Bob's CNC E4. Uh, it's on my laptop. All CNC machines have a control panel that you can access. But you can see on here, there's a series of uh, locations, X, Y, and Z, and they've got some pretty odd numbers listed there. Now you see the small numbers below those are 000. zero, zero. That tells me that the machine is actually in the home position, but I don't reference those while I'm doing my work. What I want you to notice down below is a G54. It's using an offset of G54, which is something I've set up. So the first thing I want to do is show you where G54 is at. I'm going to type in X0, Y0. And when I hit enter, the machine is going to come back over to here at a rapid rate. That is my work position for the first stage of cutting this part. So now, whatever the program does, it's going to reference from this corner to make all of its moves. But once I command a G55, it's going to forget that one and start referencing the one I have set over here. You can see the display right now shows X0, Y0, and Z0, all these are zeros. And down below is G54. Now I'm gonna change that to G55 simply by entering G55 in the command line and hit enter and watch that number. So now that number changes G55 and look at my readout now. Now I've got different numbers. If I type in G54, they're going to change again. I want you to watch that. Everything just changed. Then when I go to G55, it changes the numbers again. Now, if I hit X0, Y0, the machine will now go to a new zero point, which is over here. I hit Enter, and that's my new zero point where it's now going to do all the work from. And I will finish my second piece. Now, let's say I want to go back to my diamond cutter. I set up glass in my machine way back there and I got this really long tool which I know the length of. So I can set my machine based on that length, based on the back corner. So all I have to do is swap the tool out by using another G code. In this case I use G59. So I'm going to type in G59, hit enter, the numbers all change. Type in X0, Y0, and hit go. And now that's my new zero point. And here's the beauty of doing this. I know the height of this tool. All I have to do is insert that tool and hit go because I've got my tool set to a zero position at the surface of the glass. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to type in Z0 and it's just going to come down and touch the glass. And that's how it's all set up. All I had to do is enter G59 and my entire program will reference that number from now on or that work position. All my glass projects I just type in a G59 and the beginning of the program and it's all set up. So hopefully you get the drift of what's going on. I want to show you how this actually works by designing up a simple little part. I'm in a V-car right now and I've designed a very simple part that has two cuts in it. And you can see that when I run them, let's reset that, you'll see how the tool moves. Watch this piece of wood here. Let's just zoom that out. This program cuts two lines. 
you see the tool moves there and over to there and it comes back and moves from here over to here. So what we're going to do is we're going to save this program and we're going to modify it. So I'm going to hit save. I have to select that item, save, and we'll save this as lines. And then I'm going to open up that program. And you have a series of commands in here and you have the two moves to cut the part. Here is move number one right here. And then there's move two right there. So what I'm going to do is first type in the first work offset. And I'm going to do it before it does any moves. So a move is when you see an X, Y, or Z like that. So I'm just going to type in G54. And before it actually gets to the second line, I'm going to type in G55. So I'm going to wait for the cut to be done, which is right here. And then it's going to wrap it out of the part and it's going to wrap it over to the new line. So right there is when I'm going to change the offset. So I'm going to change that to G55. And I'm going to save that. And let's go back over to the machine. So I've loaded up the program and it's really difficult for you to see, but you can see a blue line right there and another blue line right up here. So based on this program, these two lines should run right next to each other. However, with that G offset, what's going to happen is the first line is going to run right over here. The second line is going to run over here because of that G offset command change. So I'm going to get these out of the way because I don't need them here right now. And I'm going to start this program so you can see how it does that. So I just hit start and it's coming over and now it's running the first line. And then it moves all the way over to that second position for the second line. Because it called up G55. And now it's plunging down pretty far. But and that's it. And then it comes back to the zero point of G55. So the final question is, how do you set all this up so all your positions are preset and all you have to do is enter the G code position that you want to use? Uh, I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So the first thing we're going to do is call it the G code that we want for our position. In this case, we have G54, but I want to set up the G59 one first. So down in the command line right here, I'm going to type in G59 and hit enter. And now, up here, we have G59. Then I'm going to put my tool in the router or the machine, and I'm going to position it exactly where I want it at. So right now, the machine is in the home position. I've slid the glass over a little bit so I can put the tool down onto the glass. And one technique is to put a piece of paper underneath it and just slowly bring it down until you can't move the paper anymore. And there we have it. So this is now my zero position for engraving glass. The very corner of the glass will be at that very corner spot of the tool or the home position of the machine. On the computer is zero X, Y, and Z. So right now they're zeroed, which means my tools are already set. My Z is off just a little bit, but we'll reset that. So I'm just going to click the Z. That goes to zero. So now every time I put that diamond etcher in and reference G59, the machine will always start from this position on this entire work bed. Now I want to set up G54. So what I have to do first is move the tool over there, decide what tool I'm going to be using, and put that in the router. The tool for that position and the work I'm going to be doing is going to require a quarter inch router bit or end mill. And I've installed that. Now I've got to move it over there manually. And I do that by using my jog function in my controller. In this case, I'm going to go Y and move it over Y until it gets over there. So 
So now I'm there and we'll just say my Y or my X that way is going to be at the same position. And I am now going to set up this tool. And by the way, this tool is butted all the way up in the router. So all I have to do every time is just butt that tool all the way up in the router, provided the depth of cut is going to be this clearance here. And then I do the same thing. I set this thing up uh, with the Z function by jogging Z down. And then I just tap it down until it gets there. And now we're there. So I'm going to just pull this paper out. And we'll just pretend I've already preset everything with my board. It's all clamped down. All the positioning things are in place. Now I'm going to enter into the controller, G54, enter, and that number has changed. And what I'm going to do here is reset my Z, X, and Y to zero. And G54 is now set. G59 is set. And I repeat this process over for each position that I want. Now two clarifications I want to make. First of all, all the X and Y coordinates that I've been typing in, the machine has moved at a rapid rate. G54 to G59 have nothing to do with the speed of the machine. It has everything to do with the X0, Y0 positioning. The rapid was because G0 is called up. Had I typed in a G1 and started doing this X0, Y0 moves, the machine would have moved at a feed rate. The second point I want to make is G54 through G59 cannot be used together. You can only use one at a time. So those are the two clarifications that I wanted to make sure you understood. So to wrap up by telling you what I just told you in a very short summary, if you are working in a situation where you want to have multiple work zones and you don't want to do a lot of changing of your zero coordinates or setting your tool heights, all that can be done with the G54 to G59 work offset commands where you can have one positioned over here at this height, one positioned over here at this height with this tool and that one with that tool and one positioned over here to uh, run the very same program simply using a different offset in a different position. So these are scenarios for production, for just keeping your machine set up for certain things like I do with the glass. And that's why G54, G55 through 59 are such effective tools that you can use in CNC, especially when you're getting into production work or you make different kinds of parts you can set up stations independently for each type of part and always have that dedicated to that zone and never have to program in that or set up that 0, 0 0.4 once you set up the first time. If this video is helpful, please like it. Make a comment down below if you need some clarity or something. This was a tough one to explain. Um, other beginning CNC videos, if you want to watch them, there will be some links down in the description and some stuff that's going to pop up in front of my face right now, like uh, the tools that you'll need, uh, understanding XYZ coordinates, um, all there. Subscribe, like, comment, do all that good stuff. That helps me, that helps you, helps everybody else. This is Garrett. I will talk to you next time.